Hey, Pats Nation, Harris Rubenstein here for Patriot Support today, presented by Mizzen and Maine. We had a full show planned out for you guys, but we have some breaking news as Julian Edelman has, has been suspended for four games for testing positive against the league's substance abuse policy. Now, we do know, according to Adam Schefter, that the decision is under appeal, but as it stands right now, Edelman does stand to miss the first four games of the season. He did violate the NFL substance abuse policy. We do know that this year Edelman is trying to come back from that torn ACL that he suffered in the 2017 preseason. So if he, if he did take some PEDs in order to come back from that injury, this test would be a blatant reason why. Now we do know that in the past Edelman has taken hundreds of tests according to sources that tell Adam Schefter he's never tested positive before. This is his first ever suspension that he's faced. He currently stands to forfeit over $470,000 in base salary and he would miss those first four games which for the Patriots is actually kind of a problem. They open up against Houston, Jacksonville, Detroit, and Miami. So those are four tough games that the Patriots are starting the season with. He would return in week five versus the Colts. But to be totally honest, this is really surprising. I never would have expected out of anyone on the Patriots for Julian Edelman to end up being the one getting in substance abuse issues. Now, whether it was PEDs or something else remains to be seen. But without the Patriots' number one wide receiver, that wide receiver competition that we've seen so far in camp is only going to get more and more intense. With no Edelman in there for the first four games, that vaults Chris Hogan into the number one wide receiver spot. You have Jordan Matthews as the number two guy, Kenny Britt there at number three, and then Malcolm Mitchell at number four. They obviously acquired Cordero Patterson this offseason. So how the Patriots wide receiver depth chart sorts out is now probably the top topic for the rest of minicamp going into the preseason in August. The rest of the uh, depth chart, excuse me, isn't pretty. Philip Dorsett, Braxton Berrios, Riley McCarron, and Cody Hollister. Maybe this allows Braxton Berrios to take another step into the offense. I originally thought that they were going to try to work him into the practice squad, but it seems now with Edelman facing this suspension, he might end up as a piece of the starting offense. So stay tuned on how Braxton Berrios performs throughout camp. But again, Julian Edelman, the Patriots wide receiver who missed all of 2017 with that torn ACL violated the NFL substance abuse policy and currently faces a four game suspension. Now Adam Schefter did report again, no positive test ever in Edelman's career after taking hundreds of tests. And also an interesting note that we learned when the Patriots defensive end Rob Nikovich got suspended last year, that the Patriots actually test the supplements that their players take. So if a Patriots player does violate the NFL's PED policy, it's no fault of the team. So now it brings into question, what exactly was Julian Edelman taking that would have triggered a positive test? Now, we do know that he moved away from Alex Guerrero and Tom Brady in terms of their policies and their actions in terms of working out. So whatever substance Julian Edelman took to trigger that test will probably be the next big piece of news to come out about this. But I don't know from you guys, let me know in the comments, what will the Patriots record be without Julian Edelman? And again, those first four games of the season, they play Houston, Jacksonville, Detroit, and Miami. Houston and Jacksonville coming up with two of the best defenses in all of football, and the Detroit and Miami are going to be two tough games as well. That game against Detroit, obviously, versus a former Patriots defensive coordinator, Matt Patricia. So it will be tough for the Patriots to survive those first four games without Edelman. I still think they'll go three and one or two and two like they do every single year. I can't imagine that they'll lose less than two games just by losing one player on an offense that they didn't have last year and the offense still ended up being one of the best in the NFL. They've obviously stacked the wide receiver position this offseason too. They got Kenny Britton, who they brought in, in the middle of the season last year. They traded for Cordero Patterson. They signed Jordan Matthews. They drafted Braxton Berrios. So whether or not they were prepared for something like this is another saying, but they are clearly ready just in case something like this would happen. Wide receiver is probably the deepest position on the entire depth chart right now. But you can follow me on Twitter at SportsDean for all of your Patriots news. And Patriots Report is presented to you today by Mizzen and Maine, the most comfortable dress shirts for men made with performance fabric. You can check them out at comfortable.af because these shirts are comfortable as F. 
Like I said before, we need a full Patriots report ready for you guys, including a fun segment about the five times that the Patriots dynasty was supposedly over. And maybe it is again. Here we go. Patriots players back-to-back -back years getting suspended for PEDs. Again, the biggest story out of this for me is whatever substance that Julian Edelman took in order to trigger this positive test. We've seen him take tests before, and he's never tested positive his entire career. But who knows? We've seen former athletes in the past take PEDs to come back from serious injuries. Famously, we heard Andy Pettit admit to taking steroids way back when he was found guilty of it and ended up getting suspended by the MLB. But we'll have more news on this as it comes out. But for now, we'll see you.